imagine a remote surgery being conducted by a robo happening in one part of the world and a doctor sitting in another part of the world directing it. Or think of multiple devices, your smartphones, smartwatches, home automation and smart cars all connected to each other and generating tons of data and automating everything. Or just think of a situation wherein you could download seasons of your favorite show in microseconds. Well, that's 5G for you. Manic speeds, no delays, no lags. We've been hearing of uh, 5G for a while now, first from the government on a possible spectrum auction date sometime in quarter one of next year. And not just from the government, also from brands, tech brands, who've been launching 5G-enabled devices. I'm Subhita Kareer and you're watching Tech Entangled. Here are some of the reasons why we shouldn't be too excited about 5G just yet. So earlier you had 2G, 3G, then 4G, and next in succession is 5G. That's the next step forward, rather a huge step forward. With speeds of up to 100 gigabytes per second, 5G is 100 times faster than 4G. Now the basic premise of 5G is that it's based on high frequency waves, which are millimeter waves, which are in fact the fastest. And that means a great deal for everything, from cloud gaming to IoT to self-driven cars and of course virtual reality. And it might just end what you know as buffering. Now these might be high frequency waves, but the trouble with high frequency waves is that they offer limited range, which means that to cover an area, you need to install more number of towers than you would if that area was for 4G connections. Also, it means that you need to install those towers in close proximity to each other. Plus, these can get obstructed by a tree or even a wall. Which is why countries like China and even Korea do not have all the cities yet completely covered by 5G. So coverage is the number one issue. So it will it will be a kind of a hotspot kind of a deployment, a different architecture in itself. But in a country like India, I don't see that you will completely have 5G everywhere, wherein you just have your handsets and devices working on 5G all the time everywhere. Another one is the issue of internet penetration, which is really, really low in India, even lower than countries like Philippines and Indonesia. And then there are issues with infrastructure. So we don't have enough electricity. We don't have enough spectrum. The spectrum is extremely expensive. All of these things, including fiber, is not enough as well in India. Now to experience 5G, you need 5G enabled devices, which is why you may have seen in the past few months, companies have been launching their 5G enabled devices like Apple, Google, and even Realme. But the trouble is a lot of devices available in the market are rarely less than 30K, which is not really affordable when you think of and you talk of mass usage. Now, 5G could revolutionize everyday living, but it could also open doors and give ideas to hackers, something that the Australian government has expressed as well. Why is that so? Well, because 5G devices will generate more data than ever before. Take the example of a smart home, for instance. You have uh, multiple devices like a smartwatch, smartphone, smart TV, smart refrigerator, and a whole lot of other devices connected to each other. Just imagine the unprecedented level of uh, proximity that they have with you. And of course, the data that they'll generate. That might give hackers vulnerabilities in the system. Spectrum is yet another issue. Treat Spectrum like a highway on which instead of cars, waves travel. Currently, India is one of the most expensive countries when it comes to Spectrum pricing. So if companies do not have enough money in a bad economy, they won't be able to buy enough Spectrum or roads, like I said, for the waves to travel. And that will affect network connectivity. So currently at the current price levels, uh, what TRI has put forward and what the ministry or telecom ministry has approved. So roughly it's around, I think, 493 crore rupees per megahertz. And for a 100 megahertz countrywide band, each operator would have to spend somewhere around 50,000 crores, which is a big amount of money. 5G spectrum auction was to happen this year. 
But now it is touted to happen in the first quarter of next year. And we know that Reliance is already working with Qualcomm. Airtel too has signed a deal with Ericsson to deploy 5G ready solutions. So I think it's still a few years before you can actually experience 5G enabled cloud gaming at its best and a whole lot of other things that come with this technology. Well, that's it from me. This is Sumita Kari signing off. Let me know what you thought of this explainer and of course 5G. Goodbye and thank you very much for watching.